Assalamu alaikum sisters. How are you all doing? I hope you all are well and good. I'm Fatima G. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. So today I wanted to share with you guys some of the things that I've learned in my 33 years of living. I'm not going to give you guys 33 things. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you guys a few things that I've learned. I've learned so much in life. So I really want to share with you guys some of the things that I've learned. So let's get into the video. So the number one thing that I've learned is that we should always, always put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first because he's always going to be there when everybody else leaves us. Always. I've learned that not everyone is going to continue the journey of life with you. Some people will drop off and that's okay. We say alhamdulillah for the time that we spent with them and we keep it moving. I've also learned that a lot of us have suffered from some sort of trauma However, only a handful of us have actually tried to heal ourselves so that we can become better individuals, whilst the other half have basically become really, really numb. And I hope that those who are struggling to heal, heal soon, because it's so worth it. So it started raining, but I absolutely love the rain, so I'm really enjoying this. I just hope that it doesn't damage my phone. <laughs> so yeah. So the next thing that I've learned is that you have to love yourself first before anyone can love you you have to love yourself first and once you learn to love yourself you will be able to appreciate a man loving you a man cannot love you when you don't love yourself i've also learned that journaling and writing helps release emotional pain when i was much younger i had this auntie who always used to tell me to write i didn't understand the importance of writing until now but alhamdulillah journal really helps release emotional pain i've learned that <laughs> sometimes strangers will help you more than family so let me rephrase that sometimes people you have no blood relation to will support you and be there for you more than your own blood family that's what i've learned i've also learned that sometimes family will not support you how you want them to support you and that's okay. I've learned that sometimes some people just don't care as much as you do. Some people just don't care. They just don't. I've learned that you don't need to go to university to be successful. There are hundreds and thousands of people who are successful today who never went to university. I've learned that being vulnerable is actually a sign of strength. Being vulnerable in a world where people are actually scared to show who they really are it's a form of strength and when you're vulnerable people that you're around really get to know who you really are instead of pretending and nobody really gets to know the real you so in a world where people cringe to be vulnerable i've learned that if you are von if you can be vulnerable you're actually a strong person. I've learned that some people are willing to give up a lifetime of friendship or relationship because of one thing. Like people are not willing to compromise, to talk things through and to just let things go. Some people, because of pride and ego, they would rather let a relationship that's been going on for years and years die rather than fix it. I've learned that there's always two sides of the story and we must always try our very best to listen to both sides. I've learned that you can keep going. You can keep going even if you think you can't. You can keep going even if you're crumbling and breaking inside. You can keep going. There's literally a light at the end of the tunnel. I just said it, but I've learned that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, there is a bright light at the end of the tunnel. I've learned that it's so hard to forgive. But wallahi, once you forgive, it's such a beautiful feeling. I've learned that good health is such a blessing. And if you're healthy, give thanks and praise to Allah and show gratitude to him all the time for being healthy. Because so many people are ill. So many people. May Allah grant them shifa. I've learned that. You can only become a better version of yourself when you come out of your comfort zone. Staying in your comfort zone, you're not going to grow in that zone. That zone is just going to stay like that. So come out of your comfort zone and grow. I've learned that 
no matter how good a friend is, they're going to hurt you. And that's so difficult. But that's just how life is. Just as family will hurt you, friends will hurt you. I've learned that as much as it's important to forgive other people, it's even more so important to forgive ourselves for the mistakes we've made. We cannot keep ourselves in this jail of unforgiveness for ourselves. Let's forgive ourselves for the mistakes that we've made. We've hurt people, we've broken hearts, we've done a lot of stuff that we need to forgive ourselves for. So I've learned that we have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves for the mistakes we've made. I've learned that it takes so long to build trust and only seconds to destroy it. I've also learned that you cannot force anybody to be friends with you when they don't want to. Find other friends. <laughs> and I've learned that sometimes you have to cut your losses a friend of mine just said that to me the other day. Fatima, you have to cut your losses. That's it. You've tried. You've done your best. And that's okay. Sometimes you just have to just let certain things be. Whether we want to accept it or not, we just have to let it be. Because that's, that's just how things go in life sometimes. Things are not always going to go our way. You know? And I've also learned that you should only apologize once if you've made a mistake to somebody. However, if they're really important to you, you can apologize a maximum of three times. Beyond that, khalas, leave it as it is. Because one thing I teach my children is if somebody apologizes to you, you have no choice but to accept it. The truth be told, I believe somebody apologized to you, you accept their apology. You know, I mean... You don't have to become friends with that person again. You don't have to associate with that person. But someone is taking the time out to apologize, you should accept it. So I've learned that you care about somebody, you apologize to them always. And if you really, really care about them, maximum, apologize three times. And if they still don't want to forgive you, keep it stepping. That's what I've learned. <laughs> And that doesn't mean you're a meanie or anything. I think that's a brilliant thing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's beautiful to apologize. And it's even so much more beautiful to just forgive. Doesn't mean that you need to associate with, with that person. We just need to go keep it stepping. I've also learned that sometimes you have to forgive people who haven't asked for forgiveness. You just have to forgive them. Whether you let them know that you've forgiven them or you forgive them without them even knowing, for your own peace, for your own sanity. Because when we don't forgive somebody, I don't know about you all, for me, I feel it in my heart. I proper feel it in my body. And I don't like that sensation. I don't like that feeling. So sometimes we have to forgive people. I've had to forgive so many people who know I've forgiven them or who don't even know I don't, you know, I've forgiven them. I've also learned that keeping grudge sis you're breaking your own heart <laughs> let it go keeping grudge only hurts us let it go doesn't necessarily mean you have to forget because that's one thing I struggle with I struggle with forgetting I will forgive but I won't forget I just won't forget I remember having a conversation a long time ago with my grandpa may Allah look after him and protect him and give him good health I mean it was like, you have to forget. You have to. And I'm like, no, grandpa, I can't. Because if I forget, I'm going to get burnt again. And I don't want to get burnt. I'm not going to forget. But I fully, fully forgive. I forgive. But I, I'm just unable to forget. And I think that's a lot of us as well, isn't it? It's still pouring down. It's still raining. I proper love this. I really do. And it's mad because my attire, my my jilbab and everything it's kind of like acting like a raincoat but for me just the fact that it's raining and it's not too cold this is my element i love to be out here i love to be i love to see greenery and it, green should be my favorite color because when i see green i know all, well, i won't say i know all the shades of green but i just love to see the different shades of green it's just beautiful man 
Allahu Akbar. Allah's art is just amazing. Another thing that I've learned is that treat yourself sometimes. Buy yourself flowers. Don't wait for somebody else to buy you flowers. Currently, I'm treating myself to some bubble tea. I love bubble tea. So, yeah, treat yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. I've learned that the word love is so misused these days that it's lost its meaning. And that's horrible because I love love, but the word love has lost its meaning because everybody says, it. I love you, I love you. It's lost its meaning these days. And that's horrible, ma'am. I've learned that it's not what you have in life. It's who you have in life that counts. We all see it time and time again, especially celebrities who end up harming themselves in terrible ways. They have absolutely everything. But they get to a stage in their life where, because they don't have that genuine connection with people around them, that genuine love, they end up offing themselves, you know, even though they have the money, the cars and everything. So it's not what you have, it's who you have in life that matters. That's so important. Another thing I've learned is that your mom is your protector after Allah kind of thing. And when you don't have your mom, a lot of people take advantage. And I'm speaking for myself here. Well, obviously everything I've learned is about myself, what I've learned. I grew up in a community of women. And I, I was treated differently because my mom was not here to protect me. And I've learned that your mom is your protector. Let me give you an example recently as well. And I think the way I reacted, to be honest with you, was a trauma response. Looking back now, we're in the masjid and children be children. So my kids were somewhere else in the masjid with other children and of course when kids are together they're going to be talking right so one auntie pushed my daughter or maybe did something to that like something anyway something physical she touched my daughter I don't know and my kids they don't like that and besides they don't not, not gonna lie nobody really um tells them off apart from me so when somebody else does it it's like the world has ended <laughs> you know so she came to me one of my daughter Oh, this auntie pushed me, literally crying. And obviously I'm like, okay, maybe my daughter might have exaggerated a little bit. Cause like I said, like they're not used to being disciplined by anybody else. Um, come see me. I marched to the auntie as a mom. I'm going to protect my daughter. I went to her auntie. What happened? <laughs> we don't do that where I'm from though, but I'm different. I'm different, different auntie. What happened? My daughter's crying. She said, you pushed her. So the auntie was like, oh no, I didn't push her. I'm like, I understand you may not have pushed her, but she doesn't like that. She doesn't like being touched. So if you don't, so if you don't mind next time, you can tell her what to do without touching her. And that was it. And I just walked off. And I remember at the end of the salah, the auntie literally came to me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your daughter. I was just, I'm like, it's okay. I understand. It's fine. It's just, I'm just letting you know that she doesn't like it. So you don't do it next time. So then after that incident, I just went, it just went back to my teenage years when I didn't have nobody to protect me, like the way I was able to like defend and protect my daughter. And I did it in front of my daughter so that she knows I'm here to protect you kind of thing, you know? So I've learned that your mom is your protector, period. When your mom is there, aunties won't say horrible things about you. When your mom is there, aunties won't gossip about you. When your mom is there, um, they, they just know. When your mom is there as well, you don't ever, ever, ever have to defend yourself. And me throughout my life, I've had to defend myself. So people think I'm disrespectful. But no, I'm not being disrespectful. My mom just has not been around to speak to you on my behalf. So I've had to speak for myself. So that's what I've learned in life. Your mom is your protector, period. No matter what age, no matter what. I'm 33 now and I know my mom will still be my protector, you know? Finally... One thing I've learned in life is kindness doesn't come naturally for some people, but it can be learned. So we can learn to be kind. We can learn to be kind. Um, that's really all I have for this video. Thank you guys for joining me. This is not all I've learned. I think I'm going to do another video of some of the things that I've learned Islamically that's helped me to be 
the person I'm trying to become. Because Islam comes first before anything, you know. So I'll do that video, inshallah, what I've learned Islamically. That's helped me grow. That helps me to be who I am today. I'm fully covered. And I'm walking the streets of London as if my granddad owned the streets. Like, I'm confident. Allahumma barik. And I feel like it's only because of the love I have for my deen and the little understanding that I have that help, that gives me that confidence kind of thing. So, yeah. So anyways, if you guys have enjoyed this video, I would really love you guys to join me on my journey of growth, self-development, homeschooling, a little lifestyle here and there, you know, and a lot of vulnerability. I am, I'm not scared to be vulnerable. I'm not. That's who I am. That's who I've always been. However, what I don't want to be oversharer <laughs> or someone who trauma dumps. I don't think I trauma dump anymore. But if you think I'm trauma dumping, you guys call me out in the comments. <laughs> Inshallah. But anyways, thank you guys for joining. Please don't forget to subscribe. And um, I look forward to joining you guys in my next video. Assalamu alaikum.